Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about improving your skills. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what do you do each day to improve your coding skills? I try to solve lead code, easy lead code problems with Python every day and I was building some projects with Visual Basic or Web, but I think I'm not enthusiastic. My I'm not. I don't have enough enthusiasm to keep going, so I need some advice. Well, I think that you you, you mistake becoming intelligent or becoming like a, you know cognitive uh, strength and the process of achieving cognitive strength for strength training. Let me explain that a little bit. So when you're learning a skill or you are trying to get smarter or like whatever, it you can't approach that the same way as you would going to the gym. Because if you go to the gym, even if you I mean there are many theories on this, of course, guys. But if you go to the gym and you just you get yourself a little program that you're gonna follow and you're gonna lift some weights or like you're gonna go running or something like that, that is the same sort of mindless and boring process, pretty much every time. And over over a while, you're going to start seeing some results. You're going to gain some strength, and that's gonna be it. And then, of course, you can make it really interesting. There are people who make entire Bibles about how to do like daily workouts and like you know mix it up, etc., etc. But it, at the end of the day, it is a mindless process that you execute over and over and over to build up strength. That is not software development. That is not how smart people get smart. Smart people get smart by solving interesting problems. Because if you just mindlessly do something, your brain is not actually going to work. Because it's 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 it would be the equivalent of you using very light weights. If you go and lift a like a tiny tiny weight over and over and over, because it's as you say it's an easy problem and like you're not you're you're not actually challenging your muscles if that makes sense, they're not going to grow. And the same thing goes with your brain. That's why the first thing, and this is why I tell people, if you want to get good at the software thing, you're most likely going to find that the best fuel is enthusiasm for whatever you're doing. That is the best fuel that you can give yourself. It's same matter to how muscles need proteins and etc. etc. They need fuel. They need something to work with in order to achieve the things that they are trying to do. Right? Your mind works the same way. Sure, you still need food, of course, but there's another component, as I said, the enthusiasm. Because sitting and solving. And that's why I think this is the biggest criticism I can give to mathematics, uh, uh, the way they're being taught today, which is sort of like. They they they're taught in usually a very boring way. There's really, it's very rare that you actually teach math in a way that makes people see the value in the thing that they are doing. Then that makes it very difficult to get engaged unless you're just very nerdy and excited about the topic. If you are, then you're perfect for math because this is the way it's you sort of they just relay information and then you have to take care of your own excitement. When it comes to software development, you can take the same approach. But if you're feeling that it's harder for you to get stimulated from just doing lead code exercises, then why are you doing that? Go and build things. And if you can't get enthusiastic about building web things or anything like that, then there then you're fresh out of fucking luck, my old friend. Then why are you trying to improve every day? It's better for you to find a project that is going to get you excited. Now, if you t take uh, myself as an example, I don't have to find and uh, to work on something that is, pro is going to improve my coding skill on a daily basis. It's pointless because for me, just doing any arbitrary coding isn't going to involve me. It's not going to get me excited and it's not going to make me into a necessarily better developer. It all comes down to what types of problems am I trying to work on? What type of coding am I doing? And I have projects where 
I might take a break and do something else for a few weeks, in some cases a few months, and then I come back and then I have a new inspiration and I start working on that thing. Sometimes I work out very intensely on these things and sometimes I don't. And the and then I do, of course, coding uh, uh, as a job. The thing that is very risky or uh, the thing that is not so good is if you've already reached this point where you feel unenthusiastic about coding and you haven't reached what I call the mid-level, like the critical uh, skill level, which is where you are a solid software developer, where you can do the work and you like you had a job for a few years, etc., etc., then you lost interest before uh, before you, you know, learned how to ride the bicycle. Like Then it's pointless. You're never going to learn. You might as well go and do something else. Because if you can't build up the motivation to invest fairly heavily in the beginning of things, then you're fresh out of luck because this is the software development it's not the most complicated thing in the world but it's damn hard in comparison to most things that you've done in life I can promise you that much it is equivalent I would say in every single way to becoming a very fit person or something like that it's a significant investment and if you can't build up the motivation to give it a good like a, an honest effort when you're trying to get to the point where you sort of learn as I said learn how to ride the bicycle when until uh, until that point, you have to have that enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. Nobody can give that to you for free. The only other option is that you're like amazingly talented, and you can meet the expectations of the industry without having any enthusiasm for what you do. And even that's probably going to be a very difficult thing to swing, right? But this idea that you have to work every day, as I said, it's really just a mental mistake a lot of people make, where they mistake being getting smarter for strength training, as is, uh, that they still look at that as the same thing. It's not. It's down to the quality of the work that you put in. So it's better for you to read a, you know, a book once a month, if that stimulates you, rather than trying to w read every single day because when, when it comes to something that you're not motivated. Because sometimes uh, the mind is interesting. It has to take a break from certain things. Like what I like to do, this is just my tip to you, what I like to do is that I try to mix things up. I have many topics that I find very interesting. Sometimes I'm very interested in my one of my personal projects where I'm doing something, or sometimes I have courses in machine learning that I'm taking, and then I do in labs and stuff like that. And write the, like then though I find pen testing and security work interesting, and ops very interesting. I even go sometimes really wild, and I do mathematics and calculus and stuff like that just because I think it's interesting. Sometimes it's electrical engineering, and sometimes it's more human things like learning how to do survival stuff like setting up you know how do you make a nice campfire without matches stuff like that it's really about learning and allowing your mind to wander a little bit sometimes keeping it active and not just you know watching television because that, that sort of just rots you in the whole thing right but not having this idea that you have to force yourself to just focus on one thing exclusively because sometimes it's good to take a break and let things wander a little bit. It's still going to benefit you. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, you don't have to work every single day to improve your coding skills. It's pointless because your mind can only absorb as much as it can. And so it's, if it's full, if that makes sense, then you're just it's sort of like being tired. You're not going to get much back. You have to give it some time to rest. And that's why I think the healthy, diverse diet is a better approach, where you code on things that make you, make you stimulated. And when that's not stimulating, you learn about something relevant. I like to think about things in it as an onion. The best thing is if you can work on the, sh the core of the thing, but then there are layers that of relevancy, where maybe the thing that you're trying to learn is Python, but maybe that's not exactly the thing you feel like coding in right now. Then maybe you should learn Docker. Or maybe you should learn a little bit more about Git or like version controlling or things like that. There are adjacent things or layers to making yourself the best well most well-rounded software developer you can be and sometimes it's better to take a break from the hardcore co coding and look at something that is sort of in the same ballpark maybe you take the time now and learn some devops 
who knows maybe that's going to help you in some way or maybe networking or like you know i don't know uh, and wander a little bit and then get back to it because it doesn't matter if you do these sort of easy type of challenges every single day what matters is how much are you retaining how much are you pushing yourself and that is more difficult because when it comes to becoming smarter it really is as i said it's down to the quality and you can do that once a month or twice a, you know something like that strength training is different this is something that you have to maintain because your muscles degrade but when it comes to intelligence it takes a, you, you know it takes longer to learn things and get really good at them but it also takes a longer time to lose them if that makes sense and your your mind is most li more likely to retain its uh, uh, its information and you are more likely to retain your enthusiasm of things if you allow yourself some wiggle room in the things that you are studying with that said I think that it's important also to admit when you don't have enough enthusiasm for a given topic because if you find after uh, after like you know a few years or something like that trying to get into the industry or something like that that you can never commit to this coding thing in a serious manner then maybe it's not for you maybe you're always going to stay a hobby level software developer and that's fine it's okay then you just you know as long as you're surviving in some other fashion I mean nobody's forcing you to become a professional you can just like it as a hobby I do the same thing I'm never gonna be a serious you know I don't know a survivalist or like hacker or something like that or like something like that I just think it's interesting and that's okay some things you can do at this lower level and if you find that you are getting sort of into unenthusiastic after a few years of working try this approach out try to wander a little bit and see what's out there. Have a great day.